Did, if you just look up at the ceiling, does that cause some discomfort? Is that? Um, a little bit. It's not like bad, but it's not like. Kind of in the lower neck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like here. I gotcha. There you go. There's a lot in here. This has been trapped. Todd, you should come over here and be like, oh my gosh. Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, compared to earlier, is it the same? Or you can be, just tell me how you feel. Or... I think it's a little bit better. Not pinching all the time at the bottom? No, I feel it more stretching my neck now. So your neck pinching. So now your neck is actually bending more, and then yeah. the front has to stretch out, and underneath there is the ligaments that have to stretch. Now you've been going to a chiropractor. What have you been treating? What are you? Been... Um, so just like the mild, like cracking the back, neck, my hip, um, but I like mostly feel pain like in my shoulders because I work at a desk all day okay. for the most part, and um, my neck. And how much time do you spend sitting with them average a day? Um, probably like eight hours. If you just look up at the ceiling, does that cause some discomfort? Is that? Um, a little bit. It's not like bad, but it's not like. Kind of in the lower neck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like here. I gotcha. Right. And then when you said shoulder, where, can you point a little bit about where you feel the yeah, shoulder? Yeah, like in here. Kind of the border of the scapula? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Todd. Hey, everybody. Todd, so, so above Todd's head here, <laughs> yep. the, the joints that, so when you lean your head back, you're compressing some of those joints in your lower neck, and then mm -hmm. that gives you that local pain, and then the border of the scapula, really, it's what we call the pain referral. They're connected. It's from overstress of the lower neck that causes that. So your ear should be over the center of your shoulder. So the, for viewers, that line on her shirt represents about the center of her shoulder, right about there. And then just look straight forward, back your head, you know, about an inch forward or head from her shoulders. And the more forward your head goes, the more muscles have to work in your upper back and the more pressure that's on the joints and discs in your lower neck. So we want to, the care on the table, the adjustments of the joints doesn't change your posture. We mm -hmm. have to do what Todd's doing, which is <laughs> lots of fun, which is ext extension stretching. We have to use the adjustment as a tool to make your spine soft. What was, we have an idea of how to get the head back? Was it just adjustments or did the chiropractor say no I mean like it was adjustments then he was like just try like when you're like driving and stuff like just, try to like that's a good idea put I mean, your head back farther it's not bad to do that that's definitely good you definitely want to not you know feed the monster yeah but muscles in and of itself is not enough because there's ligaments on the front so when you're sitting for a long period of time the rubber bands on the front part of our body are all tight and so if you try to contract your back muscles to pull you upright, mm -hmm. that muscle will fatigue against this tight ligament, which will pull us back forward. So ultimately, we have to stretch the front part of your neck so that when you come upright, your head will just want to be in the right position. And mm -hmm. not, not by having to muscle it, but just that's where it wants to be. Uh, so we call that an overcorrection or a mirror image stretch. Mm -hmm. So your head wants to be forward one inch, we have to take it to negative one inch, and then you'll want to be in the middle. And and then you're right, because you work sitting, at the end of the day, we have to do things to daily participate in keeping your body upright. Mm -hmm. Maybe cross this arm under. All right, take one deep breath in for me. And just let the air out. Just relax, I got you. Beautiful, deep breath in. Exhale. Beautiful, deep breath in. Head back. Beautiful. All right, look over this shoulder for me. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Other side for me, okay, side. Deep breath in, exhale. So face up for me, okay. I don't get out much, okay? I don't know what other chiropractors do. Do you understand? I know what other chiropractors do from my, my patients tell me, right? All, everything I know about the outside world is from you guys. Anyway, That's I'm just funny. curious what my profession does. <laughs> I can say that on YouTube. Because I don't, well, be honest, I don't get, I don't go out in other chiropractor's offices like, what's going on in here? <laughs> what you doing in here? How do you change posture? You know, I go to the seminars and I, you know, listen to some of my classmates and I'm going, you know, what do you think about that? That's pretty crazy. No, like, oh yeah, I agree with that. I'm like, that, you agree with that? Anyway, I definitely am in the minority. Okay. So the top bone's a little over to the right here. This guy's a little more popped out on the right. You ever notice that this, the, the right side of your neck is, you're, you're, this is more, what do we say, level on the right, on the left, 
and the bones all kind of stick out here on the right. I mean, you like sleep on your left side. You sleep on the left side. I sleep on my back actually for the most good? part. Yeah. Person left shoulder. Well, I do. I do sleep with my hands over my head little okay. times. Oh, yeah. I think it's usually my right hand. That's you do right hand. Yeah, I think it's right hand. Okay. Yeah. Not sure about that. But... Maybe. I mean, I don't know what I do when I'm sleeping. <laughs> We're just trying to move the upper neck and move some of the stress away from the lower neck. You know, real gentle. There you go. There you go. How does that compare? No, don't say that again. <laughs> I just felt totally different than anybody I've ever adjusted me. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely not going to insult the guy that's All right. twisting your neck. Right. Oh, I got you. I got you. She'll wait till she's walking out the door. I got you. There we go. Okay. There we feel that right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can okay. feel that. What not. you do? What was your high school extracurriculars? What were, what were you into? What I did it? lacrosse in high school. There it is. <laughs> lacrosse. How many years? Only two years, but I played like soccer all through up, like through middle school. But then our high school team was way too good for me to. <laughs> How many get headers? On. How many times did you jump up and use their head to hit the ball? Not very often. Okay, okay, good. Okay. I wasn't that good. <laughs> okay, okay. That's that's the main thing that gets people in trouble is the surprise. You're not supposed to use your head to whack a ball with it. I mean, it shouldn't be too complicated. <laughs> doesn't does a number on the neck doing that. There might be a little mark on your neck just when you go to work. People might say, <laughs> say it was a yeah, chiropractic no. thing. Well, I'm working from home tomorrow, so. Okay, okay good. <laughs> okay. I'll be coping Should on be my good. Monday. <laughs> but yeah, this is that little crunch in there. That yeah. isn't, that's not something that's been trapped in there. And this is actually the cause for why your lower neck is under extra stress because this is all tangled up here. And so somebody needs to go up here and untangle your upper neck. Once it's untangled, there are things we can do to keep it and prevent it from retangling back up again and you live a long life and never <laughs> need to see me. And, and even your need for chiropractic can go down whereby you just stretch and then when you're unable to stretch, that is your barometer for when you need care again. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of the, the goal is not three times a week the rest of your life chiropractic. It's, you know, come in, get adjusted, get everything moving, get it untangled, and then learn how to take care of yourself stretching and then your need for me goes down and even on this side i'm not very this is all all of that did it, so you did it, did you know this was up here did you know this was yeah a little bit okay next been bothering me a lot lately. okay okay let me just, let me just check okay i'm gonna clean all that out of here <laughs> i'm gonna get rid of all this can't have so when you were bending your head back earlier when i asked you, you look up at the ceiling mm -hmm. If your upper neck was working in conjunction with your lower neck, you wouldn't feel that pinch. And we're going to check it again at the end. You're going to go, okay. huh, doesn't hurt like it did. Because now you have a even participation and not asking just your lower neck to do everything. You have other members of your team helping out. And that's all it is. It just, there are seven vertebrae. And if you have all seven working, and usually things feel pretty good. But um, when you just depend on the lower vertebrae to do everything, they're going to talk to you and say, stop. The curve in your neck maintains that proper mobility whereby your upper neck moves first, your lower neck moves last. And this is where we have to stretch like Todd's doing. There's a device called a denerol that holds your mm -hmm. neck in this curved position. Real gentle. A little bit more here. Maybe a little bit more. Very good, Barry. There you go. A lot in here. This is what's been trapped. It has that feel, but it didn't, didn't hurt at all, right? I mean, mm -mm. Didn't hurt at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of like hurts in a good way, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like a deep mm -hmm. tissue massage, almost like. Yeah, there's a lot of build up in there. Again, if he's working on you, just 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 smile and nod, <laughs> just just make him happy. Yeah, right there. Wow. I mean, Todd, you want to see? Look at that. It's pretty dark. Oh, I mean, oh yeah. That's what she's got trapped yeah. up there. I mean, that, that was. Ten swipes and then really a lot of congestion. Well, my neck did hurt. <laughs> That's fresh. And then we just, it's pretty, she's ready for stretching. She, her neck is supple enough to, she should be able to just stretch, master the stretching. Her need for chiropractic should be pretty, mm -hmm. I mean, like, you don't, you don't need, how often were you going, like once a week or? Yeah, like once a week. And just a little bit of relief and then it comes back and, or? Yeah, pretty much. We gotta get you stretching. I'm telling you, you're, you're gonna be able to go a month or longer if we can get that dental in there. And we'll let you start tonight. And okay. you know, you just it's just holding you here. So the work takes you chin down and forward, and we have to do things to and 
That's it. It's not. Yeah. And, like my mom's neck is like super far forward too. It's like when I noticed mine was starting, I was like, no, yeah. uh, it's just, it's, <laughs> that can't happen. You're so young. It's, how old are you? What's your? 30. Oh, yeah. You're super, you're super young. <laughs> <laughs> Us young people in our 30s. <laughs> I'm not close to 40 or anything. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> it's getting depressing around here. <laughs> you and I are around the same age. Are you, how old are you? 33. Okay, you're a little. Right, right. Split the difference. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull up a spot next to me on the floor tonight. That's right. You can how exciting. <laughs> Hold hands. <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> uh, Thanks, we have, Ed. We have two dogs and a cat. And the cat Uh-oh. is now like ponied up with me on the floor mm. because she's like, oh, if I just go directly above his head when he like splays his arms out, <laughs> he'll just pet me because I'm like, <laughs> love it. <laughs> Your shoulders go down. Wow. Yeah, there we go. A lot of... <laughs> I didn't know they were elevated, Ed. I know. I know. It was a stressful day already at work, so I feel like I'm just like... <laughs> oh, my. Tell me, what happened? Just... Uh, just everyone needs... Co-workers or... Clients. No, just too much work. Okay. Too much work in a little amount of time. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Let your chin go up for me a little bit. Get that, if you can. See how your default is tucking your chin? Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm going to pick on you. We have to start getting your neck used to arching back and it being okay there. And uh, just, you want to be as, you know, as much as you can let your chin go up without it being too uncomfortable beyond that end of the spectrum. How are you? How's his elbow? Are you good? Oh, yeah, There's some soreness. I can, I know all the hiding spots right there. It's yeah. These are the roots yeah. of her neck that are inflamed. I can, I'm dancing around them a little bit, but I'm sure that feels lovely. <laughs> Doesn't hurt that bad. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, I'm gonna clean all this out. Like these ribs here are elevated more about an inch higher than they're supposed to be right here. This shouldn't be all. This should be more compressed in. This should be more curved down here. So as your head goes forward, you lose some of the curve in your lower back. If it goes into an accentuated thoracic curve, we call it kyphosis. So as we reduce this, this will allow you to bring your curve in your neck and lower back back. So nothing to go into the hips, nothing down the legs? Uh, no. Okay. No, yeah, it's really just the upper body. Okay. It's, it's, it's so tough with, with understanding the spine because half of it has feeling. And so the two structures that you can tell me about aren't hurting is essentially what I can ask you, right? The joint's not hurting and the nerve that comes through the hole isn't hurting. The disc could be in trouble, but I you won't feel it until it's injured, if that makes sense. And so it's mm -hmm. this is why... We usually wait, it's like a reactive care medicine when it comes to disc injury. We have no real pro proactive care. The proactive care is get the curve back in the lower back, make sure that all the other parts of the spine are moving, and we'll practice that in a second when we get on the dental roll with your back, but I suspect some difficulty in here just based on the position and tightness in your middle back. And again, there's really, there's no reason to take an MRI, but my point is that we, you can see maybe accelerated aging down here because this is tight this might age faster it's not at a symptomatic level yet but that's why this is why it's missed it, it could very well be that there aren't any disc injuries but there could be a small one and we have no idea you know, so until you have an MRI I can be suspicious of it because this is tight so if this is tighter than it's supposed to be that means somebody else must be doing extra to account for this area being tight and like what causes that to be tight from like sitting, really sitting? sitting. Yeah. Okay. Sitting makes you lose the lower back curve. The slouch pops this area out mm -hmm. because it's in the wrong position. The muscles are working harder than they're supposed to be, which tightens down the area. Mm -hmm. Sitting is the new smoking. It's what, <laughs> so when you're sitting, even we'll, I'll try to teach you some stuff. When you're sitting, you put the dental roll behind your back, and you actually intermittently, not the entire time, but push, push. You'll have push into here, right? Mm -hmm. And you try to remind your spine to have some curve in it. Do disc injuries disappear one day or does it take 10 years for them to progress and finally, and the answer is yeah, they take 10, 15 years before they become symptomatic from when they start. So 
somebody comes in at 40 with a disc injury, well, somebody, somebody should have taught you something at 30 or 25 to prevent it. Like my other mm -hmm. chiropractor told me, like my hips were like, like one of my legs, like I stand like higher. Getting into the <laughs> why I'm thinking there's some level of disc injury. So your right hip is high. Yeah. Right. So the right hip goes high to allevi alleviate pressure on the left side. So if there's a disc injury on the left, your right hip will go up as to avoid it. Mm -hmm. So you won't feel it as, as a symptom yet because your body's just fidgeted and moved stuff around. Does that make sense? So yeah. it's, it's because your body's into, into going into what we call antalgia. The silly part is that we want to undo the hip height. The problem is the body purposefully and intelligently raised that hip to alleviate pressure on the nerve. The way we get rid of it is by removing the need for it to exist. As we move the stress off your lower back, the lower back doesn't have any more injuries. The hip height doesn't have to be altered anymore because nothing needs to be avoided. Mm -hmm. you catch me? Yeah, And that so makes sense. by moving the stress to your middle back, by getting the curve back to your lower back, the lower back's going to be happier, the hip height will go down automatically. You don't force it back down. First of all, it's not even possible to force it back down, even if I wanted to, more than 30 seconds or very temporarily. Your body did it purposefully. Um, it just sounds cooler for me to say, yo, your left right hip's high, let me shut it back down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, well, it didn't do it for no reason. And by going to the source of the problem, which is right up here on her right middle, I wonder what I did. <laughs> well, I'm going back to your lacrosse and soccer. <laughs> Probably, but I never like was like, oh, I hurt my back, you know. But in the typical American, it's like walk it off, kid. You know, <laughs> you, you fall off a trampoline and get up, you're okay. Yeah, it's usually something like that. But see, as it, when you're younger, this part of your back actually arrives first. It's the first part of your back to work, and so it's the first place that receives an injury because it's the first responder. It's the one that arrives at the crime scene first, and then it gets injured, and then we have the compensatory injuries as a result. Probably until I can see from over there. It tickles so bad. <laughs> yeah, is tickling a sign of... I think sometimes injury. overt overt tickling, where you're super ticklish, like uh -huh. maybe the tissue's inflamed a little bit, or something's in there that doesn't belong there. Hmm. I mean, yes. Anybody's going to be ticklish at certain spots. Well, you're ticklish right. like extreme levels, like any spot ever. It's like it's a little suspicious, especially if it's right in an area that's inflamed, mm -hmm. gua sha wise. So you've never had gua sha done? Um, he's done it to my shoulders. Okay, good. Cool. But like, I like he'll always try to get like lower shoulder, whatever, and I'm like, I don't you whack him and run away. Yeah, I got you, got you, Get out of here. <laughs> About halfway down the shoulder. No, no. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot less on this left side. And there's some, but yeah, it doesn't tickle that much either. It's interesting. The reason why things tickle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is a lot. No, why? No, Ed, stop it. <laughs> when I began with a little frame. <laughs> Remember like Mr. Uh, was it like a Go-Go Gadget? Was it uh, Inspector Gadget? Inspector Gadget? The guy with the cat, you know, he always had that really uh -huh. deep voice. Got him. That's a lot of buildup. I'm, I'm sorry that that was not. I think like a, like a <laughs> and then Todd, you should come over here and be like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, what is that? <laughs> 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 yes, yes. <laughs> you pop your own toes? Do you pop them? No. Okay, I'm just learning. Okay, no, no moving. It's just no hair bubbles. Okay. They're moving. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 
all spongy. So I don't feel any injuries. It's just, just the pinky toes. What is it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's all there. We go. I did stress fracture this foot. On the outside here, on this guy? Um, no, it was like on the, like the one top. of these, yeah. Hmm. A while, like two years ago. When was that? Two years ago. Were you run, running, or what were you doing? Yeah, running in uh -huh. the wrong shoes, apparently. But like, it doesn't really hurt. Anymore. Did it? Could you tell right away when you fractured it? So I could tell like something was like wrong because it was. I think like it did like hurt a lot, and so I just kept like. Rubbing on it, and then I was like, okay, I can't do that anymore. And then just was like, oh, it'll just heal itself, and then didn't go to a doctor for like six months. Have you, have you noticed this bone's a lot bigger right here? Have you noticed this is a lot bigger right here? Mm -hmm. Feel that over, and then feel the difference between those two. And then I was in a boot. Oh yeah, I was in a boot for a while. <laughs> <laughs> the bones like, so I can yeah. tell this. This is definitely under stress. So bone grows when you stress it, right? So yeah. you make a muscle stressed out. So I mean, this is like half a third. That's nice and I, smooth. I've never noticed and then you got a big before. you got a lump right there. I do have a lump right there. You tell her to stop wearing shoes around the house all the time. Again, this is it's not I mean, I guess I'm not gravely concerned about it. I'm saying this is yeah. not an impingement site, it's not like an area where there's a hole with a nerve going through and then something's gonna yeah. get hit. But um, it, it means that biomechanically there's probably too much weight on this area. So do you did you wear heels a lot? No. No? So sometimes when we're, if you're wearing heels you know, or even running, sometimes the weight goes to your toes more than it should. Mm -hmm. That puts the stress there. Yeah, like I'm kind of flat. Head. Well, I'm also flat-footed a little bit too. Is there hip rising putting left, more pressure on that left side if it's going right? The hip rising would be because of pain avoidance that, from this area. So yes, mm -hmm. this would cause avoidance. Mm -hmm. uh, see, we're too young. <laughs> 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 this will become more clear in like 10 years when it's like, oh yeah, I got sciatica now, I'm on my foot. I, see, we're at the early stages here though, so it's a little bit hazy, mm -hmm. and, but um, there's definitely growth of the bone there. Interesting. Even this toe is more, you're more bunioned here, I mean, it's mild, but I'm saying this is, yeah. you know, this is a larger level of deviation, so mm -hmm. your toe should be more here. <laughs> And this is deviating more than this toe is deviating, okay. so you favor standing on this left side. Yes, that's true. I got your legs. All right, take a deep breath in for me. Here we go, real gentle. It's okay. Exhale. Okay, breathe. I got you. Breathe. Relax your back. Exhale. Okay, breathe. Exhale. Good. Okay, she's moving. I should loose. She's good. Breathe in for me. Relax your arms. Relax your back. There we go. Exhale. Stretch. Good. One more time. Breathe. Exhale. There we go. She's super flexible. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Very good. Tread left for me a little bit. Real gentle. Here we go. Here we go. Yep. So the goal is to loosen up. <laughs> so I find that this area is, if this, if this, this is channels that drain your sinuses that go behind your ear. Yeah. So <clears throat> when this area is tight or congested or bound up, it can block some of the drain lines that go down your neck. Mm -hmm. So sinus issues, ear issues, and that, you know, you can mechanically rub that area or adjust it and it helps drainage. <laughs> Feels weird. Right. If it felt natural, you wouldn't need to be here. This is where your neck belongs. She's really almost, you're gonna grow out of this one real quick. So this is gonna be good. You're gonna put this white one in your pillow and then the gray one she's gonna be using for her neck on the floor. You're like, see how the back of your head's almost touching the floor? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it touching? No, it's, I don't think it's touching. That's my hair, yeah. Okay, my head well, when your head touches, you're, then you're not really, mm -hmm. if two points are contacting them, this isn't really doing anything. So we have to have your head a little bit off the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be on the floor now. Um, this makes me so happy because like every night I'm like, hey, we need to go up. I need to get my stretch in before we mm -hmm. you know, turn the lights off. Or That's right. Watch TV. And it's just, and she's just like, ah, okay, fine. <laughs> and I was like, yep, all right, let's go do our stretches. <laughs> Here's just 20 minutes. 
And then, then how about this? The bonus is that you're not going to need to be adjusted so much. I mean, you're, you, you shouldn't be going. That should save me some money. Right. You're not going <laughs> to need to have to go weekly. The goal is going to be something like, you know, once you master this stretch, maybe once a month. I don't know. At least it could be every few weeks, but not once mm -hmm. a week even. I think with, your, with how things are moving, once you get this curve back to your spine, your need for... Your neck is supple enough. Now, if you had giant adhesions in your neck, where mm -hmm. I'd say, look, you're going to need eight visits to break loose your neck, but I didn't feel that. Your neck is moving. You have enough chiropractic under your belt that everything's moving. So you're really directly, you're ready for the, for the molding. That's all that's been missing here. Maybe mm -hmm. some of the soft tissue, <laughs> there's some dirtiness in this. That, that yeah. should, those marks shouldn't be there. That's from things being clogged. If you just do adjustments properly in the upper neck, that really shouldn't be that dark. So either they're adjusting your lower neck Maybe they haven't been adjusting your upper neck, you know, as well as it could be. Okay. I really am actually more concerned with your lower back, and I'm gonna, I wanna show you. So to get off this guy, you just sort of lift your head, lay your head back. There you go. But I'm gonna, I wanna oh. first start with this guy, mm -hmm. and then I wanna. Uh -huh. but, so go ahead and sit up for me. And then let's see here. Lay back for me. I got you. All right, breathe. Bend the knees for me. All right. All right. What do you think? Pretty that horrible. feels weird. Yeah. <laughs> Too painful. Too difficult? No, it's just weird. All right, well, this is where your, neck, where your back belongs. <laughs> your back needs to be curved all the time. And I, if it felt normal, your hips wouldn't be on the level. You know, it's, these are your compensations due to this curve not wanting to be there. So your back is supposed to be curved all the time, and I'm, it wants to be straight because you sit for many hours mm -hmm. during the day. So being curved feels odd. Mm -hmm. What I was trying to say earlier is that even when you're sitting throughout your day intermittently, you put this behind your back, lean back in the chair, mm -hmm. and it, again, it becomes more comfortable. It's like if your teeth are crooked, you go to an honest, they put a retainer in your mouth that's where your teeth need to be, it's not going to feel good. Yeah. But when your teeth are in the right position, then the retainer feels natural. You can start with a roller if you want to start with the foam roller. You know, it's not a bad idea. So before we go to the dinner rolls or this piece, you just, be, you know, Todd will show you, right? You just, you just have her on a foam roller. Yeah. That allows you to move around, mm -hmm. you know, and then you just attack that middle back. Come, go back up to your upper back, but just start counter-stretching the time that you're spending bending forward. Um, and then little things like you, when you're home on your phone, be on your belly and arching up. You know, little things. Not, you're not always sitting on the couch rounding forward if you mm -hmm. can. Okay. We, get, we get locked into habits of patterns of positions, you know, letting this be okay. This should be an okay position to hang out in. It shouldn't be like, oh, oh it's pinching. <laughs> It's, it's not yeah. good. If this is this, this should be easy. If your back is moving evenly, then there shouldn't be anything pinching. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and look up. I'm just curious how that feels. Just looking up. Oh, all the way up. Yeah. I mean, compared to earlier, is it same? Or you can be, just tell me how you feel. Or I think it's a little bit better. Not pinching all the time at the bottom. No, I feel it more stretching in my neck now. So and your I neck get pinching. So now your neck is actually bending more, and then yeah. the front has to stretch out, and underneath there is the ligaments that have to stretch. You did great. Okay. <laughs>